In this video, I play Terraria, but here's the twist. Every time I damage an enemy, I gain experience that goes towards leveling my weapons. With each level, increases the damage, critical strike chance, size, and best of all, additional projectiles that I'm able to shoot out. Things are about to get insane, so stay tuned to witness it. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to chop down some trees or wood, and right after, I'll be searching for my very first weapon. Now, it's going to be very essential to find weapons that shoot out projectiles, and there are a few that I have in mind. Boomerang, such as the wooden boomerang, is a very good option because I can upgrade it to the enchanted boomerang with just a single fallen star. And with that, I can begin killing some monsters to collect materials for the thorn chakram. There's also the option of finding the Ice Blade in the Snow Biome, Enchanted Sword from the Sword Shrine, but that's very unlikely, or the Star Fury once I obtain some Gravitation Potions. Since there are some dangerous monsters in the Underground Snow Biome, I won't be prioritizing the Ice Blade, neither the Enchanted Sword because the chances of finding that is low, and I obviously don't have Gravitation Potions, so I've settled on finding the Wooden Boomerang first. Okay, we're good on wood. We have over 500. Let's explore the right side of the world now. And if I can't find it there, then I'll search on the left side. Oh my god, we just got a sharp tentacle spike. Okay, I mean, not what I was expecting to get. But I can definitely use this for now. I'm still going to try to find the wooden boomerang though. Because that has a ranged attack. And then I guess I can just use this for close combat. Oh my god, and we got the Ancient Shadow Helmet. 6 defense, plus 5% increased critical strike chance. Well, I can say I got very lucky right at the start. I'm almost at the end of the right side of the world. But I do see some water here, which is a good indication that there is a Sky Island above. So I'm just going to put down some rope here. And let's see. Yep, there is a Sky Island. Now I'm hoping for the Star Fury in here. You know what? I'll take that. Lucky Horseshoe. That's going to negate fall damage. And I'll just mine some of these ores. So that I can make a better pickaxe later on. Okay, I found a living wood tree. Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. Found the wooden boomerang. And it has demonic on it. But that's not going to last for long since I will be... Turning it into the enchanted boomerang right away when I find a fallen star. There's the fallen star. Now from 12 damage all the way to 17. I have some pretty decent weapons now, so let's go to the jungle and farm some materials to make the thorn chakram. But I'm just going to make a little house first to store my stuff away. My inventory is completely filled out. No way that happened. Right when I got to the jungle too. So my enchanted boomerang is almost at level 1. So let's keep track of our stats right now. We have 20 melee damage, 12% critical strike chance. So let's kill a few more monsters and see what changes. After killing this jungle bat, I should be at level 1. There we go. Okay. It's at 18 damage now, which is a bit weird. But I did gain 1% more critical strike chance. And then attacking with this boomerang. Oh! So it looks like I'm able to throw out two boomerangs at the same time now. It's just a small chance for that to happen though. But I know that once I level this thing up more, it'll be much more consistent. Found my first life crystal and a chest down there. I'm hoping it's the feral claws. Okay, it's a fishing pole. <laughs> Not what I wanted. My weapon is almost at level 2 now. A couple more hits should do it. There we go. Okay, let's see if it's more consistent now at throwing two at the same time. Okay, that's two in a row. Three in a row. Four. Yeah, I'd say so. And it does look like every level I get, it's just plus one melee damage and plus one critical strike chance. But anyways, to make our thorn chakram, it's actually pretty simple. All I need are just six jungle spores and nine stingers. Oh, there's the Feral Claws and it has warding on it too, plus a Gravitation Potion. That's going to give our melee weapons a lot of attack speed. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of diamonds. 
13. If we can find two more, I can make the diamond hook. And there's rubies here too. Okay, that's going to be super good because I can summon the king slime and the king slime gives a bunch of experience because of how much health it has. And the more health it has, the more experience I can get. And also whenever I hit the king slime, it does summon out more little blue slimes. So that's even more experience. That's enough jungle spores. Now I just need two more stingers. Found the suspicious looking eye as well. So I can summon the Eye of Cthulhu whenever I'm ready. After this spiked jungle slime, I should have enough to make the Thorn Chakum. There we go. And this life crystal is going to bring me to 200 health. Okay, let's head back for now. Okay, first things first, I'm going to make the Thorn Chakram. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I got Unpleasant on it, which is a pretty decent modifier. So I won't be using the Enchanted Boomerang anymore. Then let's go ahead and make the gold pickaxe to speed up mining. And I guess I'll just make the tungsten chainmail for some extra defense. Let's head back into the jungle now to find our remaining life crystals for max health and some other accessories like the Hermes boots. Oh my god, Hermes boots. This is such a weird position for the chest though, to be in a 2x2 area. Oh my god, are these diamonds? Yes! Okay, I can make my diamond hook now. Okay, and this life crystal is going to bring me to 300 health. Five more until max health. Ooh, cloud in a bottle. I'll take that. Found a magic mirror and a sharpening station. So that's going to increase our armor penetration for our melee weapons. Oh, I found the shimmer pool area. So I can definitely use this as free reforges if I do get a bad modifier on a weapon. Okay. Found my very last life crystal. There we go. Maxed out my health. I'm just gonna get one more life crystal so I can make the heart lantern for extra life regeneration. Perfect. Okay, let's head back home now. First, let's craft the diamond hook. Then I'm gonna make tungsten greaves. We have 28 defense now. And then it is finally time to face off against our first boss which is going to be the King Slime. So I'm going to make two gold crowns and then let's head over to the Corruption to make the Slime Crowns. And then hopefully after killing the boss a couple of times, I can get my Thorn Chakram to at least level four. Okay, two Slime Crowns. Let's quickly build a single platform arena. Here we go, three, two, one. Yeah, so this boss, itself should be no problem 50% health left and you are finished there we go okay let's clean up the rest of the blue slimes so from level two we're at level three at 16 percent i think after one more king slime it'll be at level four so let's do it one more time. There we go. All done. Let's see. Are we at level four? Oh, it's very close. But let's go ahead and open our two treasure bags and see if we get the King Slime Mount. Yes, we did. Perfect. It is nighttime as well. So I'm going to summon the Eye of Cthulhu. And then after this... I should definitely be at level 4, if not 5. Because this boss does have a much higher health pool than the King Slime. Okay, Eye of Cthulhu has now been defeated. Let's build some NPC houses now to try to get the merchant to spawn so I can sell some stuff. It's still midway through the night, so I guess I'll summon the Eye of Cthulhu one last time. And with that, my Thorn Chakram is at level 4. With 64%. So I think it's at 100% chance for it to throw out two boomerangs. My next goal is to take on the Eater of Worlds. So, let's head to the Corruption. Arena is all set up. Let's go break some shadow orbs now. 
But after this boss fight, I know for a fact that this Thorn Chakram is going to be at level 6. Last one. Here we go. I'm pretty confident that I can tank a lot of hits because I do have 26 defense. As long as I can keep picking up these hearts, I should be good. And oh my god, my poison is doing work. Almost done here. A thousand more health to go. One more hit should do it. There we go. Let's see if I was right. Did it turn to level 6? Yes, it did. Oh my god. And I think there are more shadow orbs, so I can possibly fight the Eater Worlds one more time. Yes, there is. Oh, but our attack throws out three now. Okay, no, two to three. But there is a chance to throw out three. Wait, no, it still throws out two sometimes. But now it has the chance to throw out three. You know what? No, I'm going to save the Eater of Worlds for when I get my next weapon, which is going to be the Flame Rang. I do have the Shadow Scale now, so I can make the Molten Pickaxe to mine the Hellstone. Let's first make the Nightmare Pickaxe. And then the full Shadow Armor. Oh, I don't have enough actually. Well, that was a bit unfortunate. So it looks like I'll be skipping the full Shadow Armor and just going straight for the Molten Armor sets. Unless, if I do find an extra Shadow Orb, because there are two lumped up right here. And then there's one here, so that's three. So that's one boss summon. And then we have one here. And one here. Yes, there is. Okay, never mind. I can do it then. Okay, wow. That went by so much faster now. Okay, now I can finish off my shadow armor sets. There we go. And our thorn chakram is at level 7. Let's mine down to hell now to get our flame meringue. And to craft this boomerang, all I need are just 10 hellstone bars. And the enchanted boomerang, which I have. Okay, finally made it to hell. Let's see if I can find an obsidian skin potion. So I can mine the hellstone a lot easier. Oh, there we go. And just like that, I now have 414 hellstone. Okay, 79 hellstone bars should be enough. For the full molten armor set and the flame ring. But I'm not sure if it's enough for the Molten Pickaxe as well, but we'll see. Let's first make our Flame Rank because that's the most important. 50 base damage for a pre-hard mode weapon. That's pretty good. Okay, let's craft it. Oh, and we got Superior on it too. Plus 10% damage. Then let's make the full Molten Armor sets. Oh, and we do have enough for the Molten Pickaxe. Perfect. So, after equipping this armor, my flame ring is now at 64 melee damage. And the traveling merchant, what are you selling? Oh, DPS meter. I'll buy that. Okay, let's go kill the Eater of Worlds one last time. So that I can level up the flame ring a bit. And then I'll make my way to the dungeon to take on Skeletron. Jesus, that damage. 120 if I crit. 142. There we go. From level 0 to level 1 with 70%. That's not bad. Let's make our way to the dungeon now. Okay, arena is all done. Now I just need to wait until nighttime so that I can summon the boss. Nighttime is finally here. Let's talk to the old man and get this thing started. 3, 2, 1. Okay, the rain is kind of making it hard for me to see. I mean, the hands are almost dead already. That's one. And that's two. Just dead now, which is the easiest part. Five hundred more health. There 
There we go. So all I'm really looking for in the dungeon is the Cobalt Shield. I could try to find the Shadow Key so that I can get the Sun Fury, which is a Flail. But since I have the Flame Meringue already, I think it's a much better weapon than the Sun Fury. Because it has a much farther reach. So yeah, it's kind of optional. If I find it, I find it. If I don't, then it's whatever. Our first gold chest. Muramasa and the Shadow Key. Okay. Second gold chest. There we go. Got the Cobalt Shield with Armored on it. I will try to get the Sun Fury because I do want to see how the changes will affect the flails. It might be like I throw out two flails at the same time. There it is. It does have 91 melee damage, which is insane, but that's because of the Ruthless modifier on it, as well as my Molten Armor set. So I might use this on the Wall of Flesh, but we'll see once I start leveling this weapon up. Before I fight the Wall of Flesh though, I do want to summon the Goblin Army so I can find the Tinkerer to combine my accessories. And I do want to go up to some Sky Islands to try to find the Shiny Red Balloon. So I guess I'll do that first. There's the Shiny Red Balloon. I might as well get the Star Fury too, in case I end up crafting the Zenith later on. This Sky Island should have it. Yes it does. Let's go to the right side of the world now to kill some Goblin Scouts. Okay, is that enough? Yes it is. Now I can make the Goblin Battle Standard. And let's just go right ahead and summon it. There we go. Goblin Army has now been defeated. And that's going to bring our Sun Fury to level 2, almost to level 3. Now I'm just going to make a target dummy. So I can test out my weapons when there aren't any monsters around. So for the Sun Fury, let's see. Yeah, it looks pretty... Oh! So it doesn't change the number of Sun Furies that get thrown out. Instead, it changes the number of hits. So it's supposed to get thrown out. So that counts as one hit. And it comes back in. And that counts as another. But now it has the chance to hit twice coming out as well as coming back in. Let's see if I can get it to proc again. There we go, right there. So that's four hits in total. But if I were to just hold down the attack button. Oh my god. That's a lot of damage. Wait, yeah, it's double hitting every time if I just hold it down. But that does require me to be very close to monsters, which I don't really want to do. But yeah, it does look like I'll be using the Sun Fury then against the Wall of Flesh. Let's go find the Goblin Tinkerer now. Oh, there's the Tinkerer. Let's buy the Rocket Boots and the Workshop. Now let's make the Spectre Boots. And then the Blizzard in a Balloon. To turn it into the White Horseshoe Balloon. And then I have an extra accessory slot for the Cobalt Shield. Okay, that should be everything that I need. I've got good armor, good weapons, some upgraded accessories. So I'm finally all good to go to face off against the Wall of Flesh. There we go. Made it to the end of the world. And then let's throw our voodoo doll to summon the boss. Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh my. It just cleared out all the hungries. Okay. Let's try to aim it upwards so we can hit two body parts at the same time. Jesus, it's at 50% health already. Wait, I'm kind of low here. Okay, maybe just one at a time. Thousand more health. Oh no, I'm very low, very low. Come on. One more hit. There we go. Oh, that was way too fast. So after defeating the Wild Flesh, my Sun Fury is at level 4. And it's pretty consistent at dealing two times the number of hits. Honestly, I could use this for the destroyer fight if I really wanted to. But I won't because I do want to try out some of the other melee weapons. Now with the bone hammer, let's go to the corruption and break some demon altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. Okay, we got palladium, mithril, and titanium. Okay. 
that's enough palladium. Let's make the palladium pickaxe. Now on to mithril. Okay, I'm good on mithril. Now on to titanium. Okay, that should be enough titanium. Now let's craft the full titanium armor sets. So from 43 defense all the way to 67. So now that I have a full set of hard mode armor, it's time to get my hands on some hard mode weapons. There are two weapons that I'm thinking of right now, and they both can be found in the snow biome. The icicle, which can be dropped from ice turtoise, ice elementals, armored vikings, and icy mermans. The second one being the frost brand, which can be dropped from the ice mimic. And these two melee weapons can shoot out projectiles. There we go, there's a frost brand. And this weapon is able to inflict frost burn, which deals 10 damage per tick. So it's a pretty good starting hard mode weapon. Oh my god, and there is the icicle. Okay, I've gotten everything that I've wanted here. Okay, well we got pirates invading, so I guess this is a good time to level up these weapons. Let's try to reforge them before the pirates come. Okay, I'll take Godly. And I'll take Godly on that one too. Okay, so this thing is at level 0. Well, let's just say it's at level 1. And then this one is at level 0. Okay, pirates have been defeated. So from a level 1 frost brand all the way to level 8. Oh my god. Wait, I did not expect that. And then our icicle level 2 because I didn't really use it that much. Because I just thought the frost brand would be better. But for our frost brand, it now shoots out three projectiles. Okay, I just remembered there's actually one more weapon that I want to try out, which is the Shadow Flame Knife. And that can only be dropped from Goblin Warlocks from the Goblin Army. So I do have to go farm some more tattered cloths to make the Goblin Battle Standard again. Okay, that's enough tattered cloths. Let's summon the Goblin Army one last time. There we go. There's the Shadow Flame Knife. The reason why I wanted to get this weapon is because the Frost Brand and Icicle projectiles. Yes, it does shoot additional projectiles, but only one deals damage. So let's say if all three projectiles hit this enemy right here, then only one actually deals the damage. Same thing with the Icicle. So yeah, it's not really that good. Especially for the Twins and Skeletron Prime. But the Destroyer is fine. So I just want to see if the knife is any different from the Frost Brand and Icicle. Let's test it out on this dummy. Yeah, so unfortunately, it's pretty much the same as the Ice Weapons. The additional projectiles does not deal damage. But these weapons are good for when there are a lot of monsters that are grouped up together. It's 3am, which means it's almost morning, so... I do have to wait until the next night to summon the mechanical bosses. But in the meantime, I'm going to go up to a sky island to farm some wyverns for souls of flight. And then I can craft either the angel wings or demon wings. Okay, that's enough souls of flight. And that's enough souls of light. We got 15 now. I can craft angel wings now. Alright, it's finally nighttime. So, I'm going to summon the Destroyer as my first mechanical boss. 3, 2, 1. Yeah, there we go. Frostbrand is so good against the boss. Because all the projectiles can pierce through. Oh my god, I just realized we're dealing 2,000 damage per second. Okay, let's get away from my NPCs. I don't want them to die. Now, is the Shadow Flame Knife any better? No, I don't think so. It's dealing about a thousand damage per second. Oh my god, now we're dealing 3,000 damage per second.
ways. Go up to 4,000. Okay, 5,000 more health. And just like that, you're finished. Next up will be the twins. Three, two, one. Yeah, I think for this one though, I will be using the Shadow Flame Knife. Because it does attack a lot faster. Spasmatasm is almost second phase. Okay, that's one down. The red tenaser is almost second phase as well. There we go. And you're finished. I think there's enough time left in the night to finish off Skeletron Prime. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Three, two, one. And same thing, I'll be using the Shadow Flame Knife. All right, all done. And I forgot to check my levels before I fought the bosses, but I'm pretty sure for the Frost Brand, it was at level nine. So after the Destroyer fight, it is now at level 12. And it shoots out four projectiles. And for our Shadow Flame Knife, I'm not really sure what level it was before, but now it's at level 10. And it shoots out three to four projectiles. Okay, now that all three mechanical bosses have been defeated, I now have all the souls needed to craft the pickaxe axe. Now before I head down to the jungle to try to find the plantera bulb, I am going to acquire some weapons that I don't usually get. I will be using the Eternia's crystal stand to summon the old one's army. The weapons that I'll be getting from this event are the brand of the inferno, sleepy octopod, and the ghastly glaive. And all three of these weapons can be dropped from the mob, the ogre. But I do have to flatten out the area a bit so that I can actually summon it. Okay, this should be good enough. So without further ado, let's begin. Honestly, I could have placed some lava down to speed this thing up, but I think it should be fine. As long as I can get to the wave where the ogres spawn, there we go. Okay, here comes the ogres. Okay, things are not going so well. Wait, did I beat it? Oh, I did. Oh, I didn't get what I wanted though. I got the Phantom Phoenix, which I don't want. Infinite Wisdom, nope. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to do it again. Oh wait, they don't take lava damage. Okay, I did not know that. Okay, got the Sleepy Octopod. Come on, Ghastly Glaive. Yes! Oh, and we got Gobby on it too. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what this weapon does for the Ghastly Glaive, it's basically just a spear, but as it makes contact with an enemy, it does summon ghosts out. So as I level this weapon, I'm pretty sure there's just going to be ghosts like everywhere. And they do spawn on top of enemies, so I don't necessarily have to be close to them. So I think I'm just going to spam the old one's army to level these weapons up. But for the shadow knife, it's now at level 22. So one click from this weapon. That's like... I can't even tell anymore. That's like seven to eight knives that are coming out. I do have a feeling that I'm going to lose for this one though, because I am focusing on just leveling up this weapon. Yeah, for sure I'm going to fail this one. But it wasn't all for nothing. Now my Ghastly Glaive is at level 8. And as you guys can see, the ghosts now spawn a lot more frequently. Now with all the defender medals that I've accumulated from the old one's army, I will be buying the full set of Squire's armor. 
So the great helmet, plating, and greaves. So after equipping it from 62 defense, we now have 71. But honestly, I could just equip the titanium mass because it does have more defense. It has 23 compared to 13. And if I do take out the squire's great helmet, I only lose the life regeneration. And the set effect does not matter at all because we aren't using any sentries. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Because with the mask, it does give 9% increased melee damage and crit strike chance with 9% increased melee speed. Okay, I'm just going to do the old one's army one last time. And then I'll go into the jungle to try to find the plantera bulb. Okay, well, that's over. So it is now at level 13. Okay, let's go to the jungle now to mine some Chlorophyte and to take on Plantera. Okay, that should be more than enough Chlorophyte. I got 397. So with it, I will be making the turtle armor and then eventually turn it into beetle armor after I take down Golem. Oh, and there is the Plantera Bulb. Okay, I will be making the arena right here then. Okay, the arena is all complete. It's pretty decently sized. I'm all ready, so let's get this thing started. And I will be using the Shadow Flame Knife for this fight. Three, two, one. First phase is always the easiest. Just gotta fly around in circles. Second phase pretty soon. There we go. Okay, let's back out. Five thousand more health. And I'm good. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. Now for the treasure bag, Thelm Pantera. The only weapon that I'm looking for is the Seedler. It's a sword that shoots out a seed that explodes into tiny little fragments. And those fragments deal damage. Okay, let's see if I can get it. Three, two, one. Unfortunately not. Oh, okay, there's actually a Plantera Bulb right here, which is a lot closer to the arena. My potions are still active, so let's start this thing right away. And we're done. Okay, hopefully this treasure bag has the Seedler. There we go. And then let's reforge our weapon. Let's try to get Legendary here. There we go. Now this sword will be my main weapon, so I can put everything else away. Let's go back to the jungle now to take on Golem. Alright, I've made it into the boss room and this arena is pretty big. Let's clear out all of the traps before I summon the boss. Okay, traps are all cleared. Here we go, 3, 2, 1. Okay, yeah, looks like I'm shooting out two consistently. What level is it? Oh, level seven already? What? Oh, I'm throwing out three now. Oh my god, three thousand, four thousand damage per second. Wait, I have three more power cells. I might as well use them all up for more experience. Yeah, just look at all of those fragments exploding out of the shell. I'm now dealing 5,000 damage per second. Okay, all done. That is 10,000 damage per second. Let's see what's inside these four treasure bags. First one, the possessed hatchet. Okay, second one, golem fist. I'm pretty sure I got the only two melee weapons that can be found in the treasure bags, so I won't be needing anything else. I got two more power cells, so after I defeat Golem two more times, I'm going to go head back home. I am going to try to level up this Golem Fist though, as well as the Possessed Hatchet. Just to see how good they are when they are leveled up a bit. I just realized I'm basically giving the Golem a Bro Fist. Alright, defeated Golem two more times. 
Well, I did level up my Golem Fist to level 4, so it now shoots out two Golem Fists and my Possessed Hatchet to level 6. So I am throwing out... It seems to be three, but it only deals damage from one Possessed Hatchet, unfortunately. Same can be said about the Golem Fist as well, which means I won't be using either of these two. Okay, but now that I have defeated Golem, that means once I summon the Old One's army, I am now able to take on Betsy. And I think with this Seedler, it will just be a complete walk in the park. So pretty much the only weapon that I'm looking for from Betsy is the Flying Dragon. And it's a sword that shoots out a flaming wave. I don't know if it'll be better than the Seedler, but we'll see. It seems that if I keep attacking like this, I don't think the monsters can even get near my altar. So it's essentially like an AFK farm. Oh my god, look at the ogre's health. Dead, just like that. Oh, there's Betsy. Oh my god, that damage. Die, die, die. We are dealing over 10,000 damage per second. And you're dead. Please tell me we got the flying dragon. No. We got Betsy's Wrath, which is a magic weapon. I mean, at least I got... Okay, I'll take that. Armored Betsy's Wings. Okay, I have 155 Defender Medals now. And I said I would make Turtle Armor and then Beetle Armor, but I think the Valhalla's Knight's Armor Set is going to be much better. So I kind of mind the Chlorophyte Ore for nothing. Like I could make the Chlorophyte Weapons, but I know for a fact that they aren't going to be nearly as good as the Seedler or the Flying Dragon. Okay, let's buy the Valhalla's Knight's Armor. There we go. So we have 92 defense, and then after equipping it... Oh, it still stays the same. Okay. I actually do lose out on damage though. Wearing the old armor gives me 112 melee damage. But after equipping the Valhalla's Armor, I have 101. Oh, that's why. I do lose out the 15% melee damage from the Squire's Plating. Because the Breastplate only gives increased life regeneration. That's fine though. I have way more than enough damage, so... A little more life regen. Actually, no, a lot more life regen. Because it's massively increased life regeneration. Is going to be really nice. I'm going to keep on killing Betsy until I get the Flying Dragon. But first, let's check our Seedler. After all that, it is now at level 26. And our weapon is huge. Plus the seeds too. Look at the size of the seeds. Alright, here's Betsy again. And you're done. Please, Flying Dragon. There we go. 203 melee damage. Let's get this bad boy to Legendary. Oh my god, my first reforge. Okay, and here is what it looks like. 3, 2, 1. Now let's go level this thing up a bit. Oh, and the best thing is, it can go through blocks. Okay, it's starting to shoot out two now. Okay, after using this weapon for a little bit, I can already say that it is nowhere near as good as the Seedler. Because only one projectile is allowed to hit at a time. Which is very unfortunate. I actually had high hopes for this weapon. Don't get me wrong though, it is still a very good weapon. Oh, what's this? Sky Dragon's Fury? It seems to be very similar to the Octopod. They both spin. But this one slams onto the ground. While this one does not. It does have a right click though. Oh! If multiple of these projectiles can hit all at the same time, this is going to be a very strong weapon, but it is very inaccurate. Okay, the right click is just horrific. It's just like way too inaccurate for it to be dealing consistent damage. 
But I gotta say, the spinning attack, it's like a meat grinder. Look at that. Ogre is already dead, just like that. I can just run through all these guys, and they're dead. Okay, the Sky Dragon's Fury is at level 19. With the right click dealing about 2,000 damage per second. And for the left click... Jesus! That's almost 10,000 damage per second. And the Flying Dragon clocking in at about 2,000, 3,000 damage per second. Now before I take on the Lunatic Cultist, I do want to kill Duke Fishron a couple of times to get my hands on the Flareon. So let's go into the Mushroom Biome and get ourselves some Truffle Worms. Okay, there's my third one. Let's head over to the ocean now. And I don't think I will be making an arena because I just know for a fact that I can just destroy this boss in a couple of hits. So I'm just going to drink a water potion instead. Oh my god. Look at that. 16,000 damage per second. Third phase. And you're dead, just like that. Okay, did not get the flare on, but that's okay. We got two more attempts. There it is. Perfect, got godly on it. And I'm just gonna summon the old one's army again to level this thing up. Now this is a flail, so I'm assuming it's gonna be like the golden fist. Oh yes, there we go. We're shooting out two flareons now, which means twice the amount of bubbles. It's at level 7 now, and we're throwing out three flareons. Oh my, look at all these bubbles. Okay, that's finished. Our flareon is now at level 18. And this is what it looks like. That's a lot of bubbles. And these bubbles are able to home in onto enemies. Let's make my way towards the dungeon now to take on the Lunatic Cultist. Alright, let's begin! Oh my god, those bubbles! Look at that, they all home in onto one enemy! Okay, I'm kind of contemplating on which weapon to use against Moonlord. It's either the Flareon, the Seedler, or one of these solar pillar weapons, such as the Daybreak or Solar Eruption. Okay, solar pillar is down. Let's make just the Daybreak for now and see how that goes. Okay, Stardust Pillar has been destroyed. Now, I'm really not sure about the Daybreak. Let's say, for example, if I were to land all of my projectiles at 100%, I'd be doing... 7,000 damage per second. Now just remember, that's only if I hit everything at 100%. But because the spread is kinda big, that's very unlikely. So realistically, I'd be doing about 4,000 damage per second. And when it's compared to the Seedler... Yeah, no, it just beats it by a long shot. That's double the damage, and I really don't have to aim with this weapon. And then compared with the Flareon, if the bubbles were able to home in on the dummy, that's going to be well over 10,000 damage. I think I'm going to scratch off the Daybreak then against the Moonlord. Let's make the Solar Eruption now. And let's level up this weapon with the next pillar. Okay, Nebula Pillar down. All that's left is the Vortex Pillar. But before I destroy the last pillar, let's test out the level 8 Solar Eruption. Three, two, one. Okay, it's still not as good as the Seedler or the Flareon. Honestly, I think the Daybreak is even better than the Solar Eruption. This weapon does not even break 3,000 damage, and the Daybreak does reach up to 5,000 damage per second. Well, it's either the Seedler or the Flareon, I guess. I am leaning towards using the Seedler though, because, I mean, it's already at level 37, so this is the highest level weapon that I have, 
And I mean, just look at it. It's basically like a full screen attack. Okay, Vortex Pillar is done. Let's go back home and prepare for Moon Lords. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, okay. 15,000 damage per second. Let's test out the Floron then. Oh, the bubbles don't actually have enough speed to reach the body parts. Okay, we're good. Yeah, Moonlight's moving way too fast. Okay, back to the Seedler. That hand is done. Oh my god, that eye's done. And... The core's done. Just like that. Okay, now what's inside this treasure bag? The SDMG and the last prism. Okay, I might have to fight Moonlord again to get the Starrath and Meowmere. Okay, all the pillars have been destroyed once again. Yeah, I'm basically strong enough to just stand in one spot to kill it. Please, please, please. Thank you. We got every single melee weapon in one bag. I can now make the full Solar Flare armor set. Oh my god, that is nice. Exactly 100 defense. Okay guys, the video is not quite over yet. There's just one last weapon that I want to make and most of you guys can already guess which weapon that is. If you guys guessed the Zenith, you guys are correct. So I am going to have to farm for a bunch of swords. I guess I can make the Volcano first, and then the Blade of Grass, and the Light's Bane. Okay, I can now make the Knight's Edge. There we go. Then with the Hollowed Bars, I can make the Excalibur. Oh, actually, I'm so glad I saved my Chlorophyte. So I can make the true Excalibur. And then let's take out our souls from the mechanical bosses to craft the true Knight's Edge. But then let's go get ourselves a broken hero sword from Mothra. There we go. There's the broken hero sword. Now I can make the Terra Blade. I guess I can go for the Beekeeper next while I wait for the Solar Eclipse to end. Oh my god, I just one shot that bee. There we go, got the Beekeeper. I don't think I have the Enchanted Sword Shrine in this world, so I do have to go to another world to get this. Otherwise, there's just no way for me to make the Zenith. Now let's get my hands on the Horseman's Blade. Okay, the Star Fury is kind of going crazy now. Oh my god. Those are a lot of stars. Okay, there's the Horseman's Blade. Oh my god, we are dealing 20,000 damage per second now. Okay, the Pumpkin Moon has finally ended. And my Star Wrath is now at level 38. And my Seedler is at level 51. Absolutely ridiculous. Next up is the Influx Waver. So let's go to the right side of the world and try to find a Martian probe. Okay, there it is. There we go. There's the Influx Waver. Now all that's left to get is the Enchanted Sword. So let's go to another world to get it. Okay, there we go. Got the Keen Enchanted Sword. Now I should have everything that I need to make the Zenith. Yep. Okay, here we go. Godly Zenith. Oh my god, I am so excited for this. Alright, let's start leveling it up. Okay, let's take on the Lunatic Cultist one last time. 
so that I can take on the Celestial Pillars once again. And that should give us some good experience for the Zenith. Oh my god, it already deals 24,000 damage per second. And it's only a level 6. Wait, that's actually crazy. Because my Star Wrath was basically at level 40. And it was dealing about 20,000 damage per second. But this is only level 7. Imagine if this was level 40 as well. I think I'd be doing well over 200,000 damage per second. Oh my god, this Zenith is on steroids. Look at it. I'm basically throwing out five Zeniths at the same time. Possibly even more. It's time to obliterate Moonlord. Here we go. Middle eye first. And look at the damage per second. Oh my god. That fight did not even take 10 seconds. And I dealt 67 thousand damage per second oh my god and if we test it out on this dummy 80 thousand damage per second all right guys hope you all enjoyed watching this video and me just absolutely nuking monsters and bosses don't forget to leave a like comment on what other mods or video ideas I should try out, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.